And now just give me your arm, I'll do like biceps. Hard, right? You're using your core muscles to keep yourself on the table. Yeah. Even though I'm probably testing biceps, I'm also testing a whole bunch of other stuff. Let's say you came in with low back pain and some other stuff. Now you're like, oh, what are you doing? You're killing my back. So feet on the floor, it'll be a much better test. So then what you're gonna notice about every single test that we're gonna learn this term, and a lot of the procedures we're gonna learn in all the other physical medicine classes, you need to practice how to talk to people. That's not stupid. But you're gonna get really comfortable with each other. You're gonna sit next to each other, you're gonna do stuff that I would never do to a patient. You're gonna, you'll, you'll see when we do reflexes, there's gonna be some funny stuff that I'll just let happen and then correct later. All of this stuff, going to be totally okay doing it with your uh, with your partners in, the, in, in these classes. When you do it with patients, most of you will go to do it and be like, I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the way I used to do it. Or you go to say something and you're like, I don't want to say that. That sounds creepy. <laughs> so you have to start practicing now or it's going to come out and your face is going to turn right right when you say it. Because it will be creepy to you, mostly. To your patients, if they have, you know, some issues. But most of the time it's it's just one of those things that really kind of trips you up when you do it. So if you start practicing now, it's much better. Now, patients, partners, I don't want you to, to really try to stump your partner your partner if you're the patient. So like if I say something, don't don't grill them. We had one guy too that you're like, well, you know, what if it hurts? And I was like, shut up and just practice the test. That's not that's not what I wanted. But I do want you to practice. So for the motor test, I'm gonna tell patients what I need to do is test your muscles to see if your nervous system is functioning. So I'm going to have you, I'm going to ask you to put your, your arms mostly in different positions, and then um, I'm going to instruct you on how to, how to contract your muscles to test this. So the first one, and I have to, I'm going to stand behind the patient to do this, but I'm going to show you. Put your arms up like that, just like that. There we go. All right. And now this is how I, I do all muscle tests. Even if I'm testing muscle function, I tell the patient, what I want you to do is keep your arms there. Don't let me push them down. So this is it. And I'm holding for five seconds. Now, somebody ask it. What do you want to know about it? How much pressure are you Exactly. Applying? Somebody's got to ask it. Um, it's, it's variable. It's really dependent on the patient. What, what I do is I lean in slowly and ramp up the pressure. And then this is experience. Usually I'll stop. You get a little bit of, like, muscle shaking as they're trying to figure out how much force to, to push back with. That's about the point I stop. What you don't want is to overpower the patient or hurt them. Um, and, but you don't want it to, you don't want to do it too light where they're, they're not really even pushing that hard. So that takes some experience. So right now I'd say lean into it until it feels like too much for your partner and then they'll, they'll let you know and then you'll get, uh, so it's going to be different for everybody. You can't say, you know, X amount of pounds per square inch. For the so the reason I tell the patient to hold their arms there and then let me do the work, it's a lot easier for them to understand. Some of the, you know, you, you may say, extend your wrist, and they have no idea what that means. They think this is wrist flexion. So then it makes them feel kind of dumb. Or you say, extend your left wrist, and then they have to think about all that and rights and lefts. And, you know, some of you would have problems doing that. So it's easier for the patient. It's much easier for me because I have patients that occasionally have no kinesthetic awareness. I ask them, like, with this, I'd have them do this, and I'd say, okay, push up into me. That would be the, the alternative way of saying that. But they have no kinesthetic awareness, so they just, they, they crank it. They end up hurting me, or they do too much, or they make me work too much. And I sweat already, all, all the time. Like, I'm drenched right now. <laughs> all right, so I don't want to work too hard. And especially when we start getting into some of the leg muscles, uh, patients would be really strong. And I wouldn't want, you, I mean, you'll notice when we do, um, when we test plantar flexion, everybody's going to be ridiculously strong with their gastrox and soleus. And you really have to get your body behind there. And it's really important not to tell the patient to do that, because they'll just do that, and you'll crank your wrist or something. It'll really hurt. So it gives me a lot more control over it, and it's a lot easier for the patient. Because all I have to do is get in this position, and then just stay there. It's really easy. I don't have to do anything other than that. So now we go to biceps. So that's C5. Now we go to biceps and triceps. So go ahead and put your arms out like that. There we go. A lot of docs would do this bilaterally. And that's okay. It's not great. It's okay. I don't like to do it that way because there's too much involved there. It's I like to support, and you'll you'll tell everybody there's a difference here, right? I'm not supporting the arm. I'm not doing it there. I'm not crushing her arm. I'm not holding her down. I'm just supporting the elbow. It makes a big difference. It's going to make even more of a difference when we do the wrist extensors and flexors. 
it feels like you've got to use every muscle in your body if you're doing them both at the same time versus if you're just supporting the wrist when you do that, it's a lot easier. So I want you to do this unilaterally. You'll have people that want to teach you how to do like a seven-minute neurological exam. First of all, why are you trying to do it in seven minutes? Like, unless you know it perfectly, like I can do a seven-minute neurological exam, but I'm much more thorough than the seven-minute exam that's out there because I know what I'm doing. I've done it thousands of weeks. So if you're trying to do a seven-minute exam while you're in the curriculum here, you're, you're, not, you're not doing a good job. So doing something unilaterally, is this not uh, relevant, whether the um, resistance feels different you on both sides? You should be able to tell them. Okay. okay. So if it's just slightly different, yeah, yeah. Not, not a big deal. Okay. That, that's, that's a good point. When we're talking physical medicine, if we're splitting hairs, you're probably looking at it too much. Okay. And in fact, if they're strong on one side, and maybe a little bit weaker, that's probably normal. I mean, how many of us are perfectly symmetrical before, right? Until that. It's the big differences that you'll notice. So go ahead, put your arms up like that. I have them do both arms, just so I don't have to then talk again. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe you can do one arm at a time. Hold here, and now I want you to keep your arm there. I'm going to push it, though. Let me do that. Somebody, somebody tell me why my hand is here and not up at the hand. Because you don't want to push on Good. Then relax. So that takes a little bit of skill to relax. Like, and sometimes, yeah, you see where I'm getting at, right? <laughs> sometimes I'll even have your arm out here. Because you're pretty close to your face. If you're like, if you're cranking, and then I tell you to relax, you're like, no, I'm not going to do that. I have brothers. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so that takes a little bit of skill on your part to, as you're saying relax, you also relax a little bit. But make sure that their arm stays right there so not freak out. That's probably the only one where that, that'll, that'll come into play. Right? Do you ask about handedness? Like when you no. sense differences? No, because it'll be slight. It'll be slight. So if you notice this Substantial difference that would necessarily account for a right-handed versus left-handed. Correct. Right. We're testing nerve function here, not muscle function. The slight difference is that would be more for muscle function, and we really don't get into that. It's great. So we do the same thing on this side. I hold here. I say keep your arm there. I'm push it. A lot of times I'll do this in front of the patient, but I didn't want to block everybody. So that you can relax your arms. Thank you. That uh, brings me to another point that I have to make. When I'm doing these, my body position matters. For the most part, I'm not talking about every little single step that I'm taking with my body, but I see it. This happens a lot here, where you know I did it this way, which is totally okay. I just told you you could do it this way, but then I'll see people coming here with this. Let's sit next to their front. I'm like, hi, put your arm up like that. And they're leaning into them. This, is, this isn't the right way to do it. So it, you can probably make it right, but it does. It's not. It's not necessarily reproducible on everybody. It's also, and you'll, this, you'll notice this even more with triceps, and I'll just do it and then talk about why I did this. So now I'm going to push in your arms. I want you to just hold your arm. That's perfect. That's good. And I count to five, and I relax. So notice where my body was there. Even though I don't have to push really hard for most everybody, I still get my body in a nice biomechanically uh, advantageous position. You should get into the habit of doing that. When we start getting into some of the physical medicine procedures, that's incredibly important. And it's one of those things that takes so long for people to develop that it actually impedes your ability to learn some of those procedures because you're spending so much time figuring out where to put yourself so you're not injuring yourself. So start now. Get your body in the right position and start thinking about this stuff. Now, I said that uh, the last class, but when we got to finger extensors, just put your finger up. And we're not doing this one yet. I saw this. Like, what do you, does, does she stink? Why, I mean, why are you afraid to touch people? Like, why would you do that? Because that's not the way I showed it. So really pay attention to the way I'm showing it. I want you to at least try to mimic the body position. If you figure out another way to do it, I'll let you know if it's if it's good or not. But really, it should be it should be kind of intuitive. Like this makes sense for my body. It makes sense for the patient. You know, if I had a patient that really did wasn't sure about me or maybe didn't even like me, it would be a comfortable position for them still. You know, sitting next to them and like with your arm around them trying to test muscles, it's not gonna work on everybody. Maybe I don't know. I just, um, I'm curious for a positive, what what would that look like? Like, I mean, it could maybe not hold the position or it would be painful or what, what else would you Really think? what we're looking for is, um, go ahead and put your arm up and we're going to buy some skin. Is the muscle, is it strong? Can she maintain that same pressure for the full five seconds and is there any giveaway? Does it, does it give away uh, when we're doing these properly? And then we have to, we have a grading criteria and I'm going to go over that more in lecture. But I would 
I, I would encourage you to read the grading criteria because it tells you exactly what you're looking for. Okay. Like this is one out of five, this is two out of five, three out of five. And you have to grade it that way, which is another one of my pet peeves. I, uh, I, especially in the clinic system here, a lot of people aren't grading the muscle test or grading tenderness or anything else where we have actually an objective scale to grade it with. And we need to understand those because we need to communicate with other providers. Okay, so we did, we did C5, we did C6, we did C7. Now we go to the wrist. And it doesn't matter if your elbows are bent. This just came up in the last class. Elbows bent, elbows extended, doesn't matter. So bring your, uh, your hands up like that. Now I'm going to, normally I'd be in front of the patient just doing it this way. But I'll stabilize the wrist here by holding. And then keep your, your hands there. Don't let me push them. Don't push them like that. The alternative would be most of the time I'm here. Pulling like that. Stabilizing the patient's wrist. Do it on the other side. Hold it for five seconds. Then we turn the palms up. Bring your hands towards you like that. There we go. Same thing. Stabilize the wrist. And I'm pushing most. I'm trying to get as broad of a contact as possible. Try not to push on like one or two fingers. Because again, then, we, then we'll probably test the finger flexion. Bring your fist up like that. Hold, 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 hold. Sometimes I'll count like that. Most of the time I will. Because that's another thing going on. During the test, you guys are going to be really comfortable with each other. You may say, don't put your arm up like that. You might just say, okay, go. That doesn't, that's not very good communication. Your partners are going to know what they're supposed to do, especially if you know, they're listening. Your patients don't. So even though I'm counting to five, I still will say things like hold, hold, hold. Because if, um, if I'm silent, five seconds is a lot to people. They'll be like, what are you, why are you saying? I'm, I'm done. <laughs> and they'll freak out. And then, and, I, and then I have to do it all over again. So I almost always say hold, because it freaks up something. Silence is, uh, is, is a little creepy sometimes. Okay, so that was um, C7, this is C6, C7 is wrist flexion, then we go to fingers. So fingers out like that, here we go, and flare them out a bit, that totally extends them, there we go. Hold the wrist, push them all down, don't worry about the thumb, it doesn't really count. Hold it for five seconds. Notice, full hand on the fingers, I'm not crossing the metacar metacarpal phalangeal joints there. If I do, then I'm kind of testing wrist extension, which kind of takes two nerve roots and puts them together. And that's for the, what are you testing there? That's I'm the testing C7 okay. nerve root. So then, palms up like this, fingers in like that. Now that's resisting gravity. A lot of people will do this one just by grab, grabbing my fingers and pulling, but you don't really know if they're resisting gravity or not. So do this, you can do this at the same time, but again, you're using more of your core force to do that. So I'll come in like this. Do them all at the same time. And then do the same thing on the other side. Are you stabilizing your wrist then, or no, also not pressing two joints? Well, I'm not doing anything. Just stabilizing. Are you pushing so the fingers not down? And this joint. What's that? Because there's this joint too. And but I'm not crossing that joint. I'm pushing. I'm pushing on the fingers. And stabilizing the wrist. Versus this, you got to use your abs. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot more force to deal. That's the difference. You're just stabilizing on top versus stabilizing on top. Yeah, I, I'm not pushing that way. I'm pushing this way okay. for the finger flexors. Okay, so the right. So if I were pushing this way, that would be wrist flexors too. Uh huh. It'd also not be cool to do that to people. That would hurt. Okay, so and then abduction, and abduction, really easy. Put your hands out like that. Keep your fingers apart. Don't let me push them. This one, not a lot of force. Don't let me push these fingers. There we go. Sometimes you got to prompt them because yeah. it's not something you do on a regular basis. So a lot of times, if I feel really weak, abductors and abductors, I'll tell the patient, resist, you know, make, make sure you're giving me a little resistance here. And they're like, oh, I don't even know how to do that. That's, that's exactly it what you thought. did. It takes, yeah, it takes some thought. <laughs> now put your fingers together. Don't let me pull them apart. This one's easier. But again, it's not going to take a lot. If I just hold it for five seconds when I'm doing it, I'll try it different. So you go on and do each set? Usually it's these two, these two, and those two. The, uh, the thumb, that's actually ulnar nerve. It's not really a nerve root. And that's it. We did C5, 6, 7.